not that many jobs actually requires you to think of how can you keep this thing going for beyond your lifetime and multiple generations, right? We are talking about supplies and pins and all that that needs to be around for the next few hundred years. This kind of skill, which is beyond your lifetime, actually gives you a sense of your place in the universe. And this is what really this museum is about. How to prepare our future generations for their own future. So the Lee Kong Chien Natural History Museum is Singapore's only natural history museum. We are actually taking care of the collection so that this part of science and history, natural history, is, is never lost. Uh, the museum really is older than 10 years old. It started in colonial days. For those of you who remember in the old days at the National Museum at Stamford Road, we had animals, we had a whale bone, we had tigers. Many of you folks wonder why we keep dead bodies of all these animals some which date back over 100 years. Well, this is part of Singapore's natural heritage. In 1970s, nobody wanted to be the custodian and fundraiser for it. And it was left in limbo, unspoken, unsaid. We lost all our butterflies. Anybody who wanted could take them. We gave the whale to Malaysia. The value of those specimens is really in understanding species. I imagine if we lose these specimens, it can be quite problematic for our understanding of biodiversity. Although we lost some, we had enough still kept in the collection. And miraculously, without climate control, most of them survived. That's a miracle too. You see, when we started this museum, it, it's so surreal. It just so happened on International Museum Day and 3,000 people turned up on a Saturday. I visited that place part of my modules at that time and it was very small. It was just one floor at the science library. Everybody is actually interested to know more about our local biodiversity but just that they may not have the opportunity to get to see this collection. The press wrote a very nice article, Singapore should have a natural history museum. And that was how I told Peter, I said, hey, what if in two years' time, this collection has all the countless treasures in the back rooms of great immense heritage and research value. All of this will go into a brand new museum near a university town. And now in the university set up, the university background with all the resources available and all the skills and know-how, I think we can do it even better. The expeditions are what we live for. We continue to collect specimens, new specimens, new species. In 2015, we had around 500,000 specimens. And actually this year we have doubled that. It's grown so much that I can't catch up. Research is the lifeblood of the museum. Everything that we manifest to the public has its roots in the research that we do. The area here is rich. It's not well studied for other us. It's a pattern occurring in many parts of the world where the deep sea is providing new opportunities for commercial development. So as that happens, of course you need to know what's down there. Oh, that's a patinomus! Oh, it's exciting, it's fun, it's uh, invigorating as well and that's one of the motivations why we're doing this, right? Because there's still a lot, a lot of things to be discovered in Southeast Asia, uh, in Singapore as well. We have gone out in the last 10 years to collect in various habitats, forests, freshwater reservoirs, and also in the marine environment. The sperm whale is actually one of my favorite exhibits. The fact that this is the first time that we ever found a sperm whale in Singapore waters, for the museum, this way also signifies how the museum has almost uh, lost its way, you know, and then come back again. Every time I look at these sperm's wheel skeletons, it reminded me about a collective effort. It's our wheel came to Singapore in 2015. 
and our own staff help to preserve its perfect specimen. They died for a good cause. I hope they didn't choose to die. But since we inherited them, how can we use them to inspire the next generation to don't make the same mistakes that our predecessors made? The dinosaurs are another example. It's actively used in our programs to tell people about extinction events and how majestic creatures like dinosaurs could go extinct. So all the more we need to be careful about our biodiversity now, the biodiversity loss that we face in current times. We are part of nature. Humans can't escape from the fact that we need nature in, in a multitude of ways. Things can change. If we treasure such things as a national natural heritage, you know, we can make the change. For conservation purposes, these are important questions that future scientists can answer, can ask and answer. We are hopefully you know, giving them the tools and information and the data to be able to answer these questions. On the one hand, we will try our best to safeguard the collections and the materials, but we will also do our best to draw out as much information as possible. We are trying to do the same with um, non-specimen materials. It was in 1818 when Sir Stamford Raffles sailed to what is now known as Southeast Asia aboard the Indiana. But he was also an avid collector of cultural artifacts, manuscripts, and natural history specimens. Very often, I think, um, our specimens can tell us a story about their surroundings and their habitats to a certain extent. But beyond that, you know, there is a story that still needs to be, or still can be teased out. Um, and materials such as these drawings, um, these photographs can actually enrich that story, but also, also bring in a very human connection. Because really what we're doing is, we are, we're not just doing all this just for scientists alone, right? But it's really to, to reach out to society in general. And it's important that we are able to communicate that science uh, in, in more ways than one. Not just in technical aspects, right? But in telling stories. Okay, so you can measure. Yeah. So you measure how long the maggots are? Mm. Yeah. Like 2cm. You share with him the ruler. 2cm? Yeah. So they will come within minutes of the body being there. But after they come right, then right, all the other spot of flies will come. So you can see right, there will be the first fly. The main thing about the education team is that we want to bring all the complicated research in a very easy to understand manner um, to everyone. Because I think Singaporeans in general, or maybe like the average person, finds it very hard to connect with biodiversity because we don't deal with them like on an everyday basis. So for example, last year's Aspiring Naturalist program, we had a herpetology workshop, brought them to the collections to look at the amphibian and reptile collections. And the outdoor portion, we brought them out to pastures. So I always share with the seniors that, you know, by looking at the animal kingdoms, there are many things that we can learn. The resilience, the way they adapt to the changings or the climates and the environments. So there are a lot of things that we can learn from them to have all this value in their later life as well. I think that's a challenge and that's also the beauty of how we create our programs. How to relate it in your everyday life? Really, it is about getting the schools to come to this museum. I want the future to come. So heritage is when you have something of value that basically you pass on one generation to another. But when we talk about natural heritage, we're talking very specifically about the environment, the biodiversity that we are passing on to subsequent generations of, of uh, Singaporeans or Southeast Asians because you know, as, as uh, environments start to get modified and start to get lost, these institutions, right, become some of the important places where people can go to see what used to be there, right? What specimens, what biodiversity used to be in these habitats. This science that we do, right, doesn't exist in a vacuum. This, this whole activity of writing about what we've discovered is, is you know, engaging the community. So I hope the museum continues to inspire. Continues to inspire not just research again, but also education. Inspire non-specialists as well as specialists. Inspire society. Museums are actually signposts 
to the future. You go back to the past to understand the present and to see the future. Happy 10th birthday. Happy 10th birthday. Happy 10th birthday. Happy 10th birthday. Happy 10th birthday, birthday LKC NHM. Yeah.